Um, uh, hi, uh, my name is Esra. Uh, so I'll be talking about our work on graph-based road conflation and its application on footways. Um, so uh, here is a brief agenda. I'll first start by giving motivation, why, like why connectivity-based, connectivity-preserving conflation is important for us. Um, and then how does this graph-based conflation method work? Uh, Yunzi will continue with results and then we'll con conclude the presentation. So our major motivation in this work is improving road network coverage. Um, and this impacts a wide range of use cases from transportation, accessibility, routing and navigation as indicated in, in the previous, uh, previous talk, um, talking about city planning, traffic and congestion prediction, all these uh, relate to uh, a good road, road network coverage. And recently there are a lot of augmented reality or virtual reality use cases, um, which requires a good comprehensive coverage uh, of the city using outdoor map data. Um, the focus in this work is on footways. Uh, there's a big reason about it, uh, because um, especially in the areas that we are focusing in US, uh, we, do not, we do not have good OSM coverage for pedestrian features. I'm talking about sidewalks, crosswalks, pathways, um, you know, any, anything you know, that you would go by foot. Like uh, in this beautiful city, I think we are used to having this nice map. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the coverage oftentimes is pretty scattered uh, and minimal uh, in most cities that we were uh, researching. Um, we encountered uh, city GIS departments are providing open source data sets for footways. Uh, they are manually created, they are pretty fresh, like, you know, recent data sets, um, and these data sets can definitely help improve the coverage. Then the question is, okay, we have OSM data, and we don't want to basically go away from this huge uh, opportunity, like, you know, huge ecosystem that OSM provides by only, like, you know, using OM, uh, open map data. So how do we merge these two different sources? Uh, how do we create a merged map? Uh, at the end. For this, uh, when we were looking at the literature, how you know, this map conflation problem solved, especially for line string based features, uh, we can categorize the methods into two. There are local feature matching based methods where you are looking at these road network, these line strings, you are looking at locally spatial area and trying to find some similarity uh, between the two networks. So this obviously would not consider the overall global like, you know, uh, network structure and might lose some information uh, during the process. The second category of uh, methods are graph matching based methods. And this is uh, pretty much like uh, studied well in math. Uh, so uh, often in these methods, when we apply these methods into map uh, merging or map conflation, uh, people use geometric features um, around graph nodes and edges, um, define some similarity metrics. Uh, and uh, some of these methods can involve optimization, like how these you know, similarities should be minimized, uh, maximized. Um, and uh, we, we can constrain these methods on preserving the graph structure itself. So by looking at the motivation about preserving connectivity in this overall network, we went with the graph matching based algorithms in our work. Uh, during the literature search, we also came across some deep learning based methods recently. But I mean, uh, training, tra creating a training set, ground truth is, is, a, is also a, 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 you know, a hard task here. Uh, so we uh, again proceeded with graph matching method. So uh, there are two major steps here when we are talking about matching. The first one is, yeah, we have OSM nodes and ways, but we need to construct a graph out of, out of this you know, data representation. But uh, so this represent, representation actually was a really easy thing to use for us because the, the, the rule that we put here was, okay, we are gonna look at each node. If that node appears in multiple ways, then that means it should be a graph node. This is how we uh, you know, created the nodes of the graph and anything in between those selected nodes are considered graph edges in this case, which are basically line strings. Um, so uh, 
At the next step, we, we continued with matching the nodes and edges, uh, which I'll continue in the next slides. Uh, before that, so I would like to also mention all the figures that you are seeing here uh, are based on Boston open sidewalk data that's provided by Boston's uh, city GIS department. Um, so an example here uh, on how we constructed the graph uh, on, uh, on an example area in Boston again. So the colors represent different edges in the graph. Uh, so by, by looking at this graph, we were like uh, pretty uh, pleased about you know, what we are seeing. You know, it was able to create really meaningful nodes for us. But one observation we had was, especially at the places where there are partial matches between line strings, there might be some missing nodes, like missing matching nodes in this case. So uh, it would be hard for us to do edge matching or node matching, like you know, considering these partial matches. So as a solution, what we did was we revised our graph by generating these intermediate nodes by doing some projections to the nearest line strings. Um, so this provided us a great base for continuing with node and edge matching. So for matching nodes, we started simple. We said we are going to do nearest neighbor search. Uh, but in this case, I would like to highlight, like at this example on the figure, you are seeing a really simple intersection. But oftentimes, when we looked at how the sidewalks were delineated around these intersections, uh, it was really various, you know, various styles you would see. Uh, so there might be additional line strings coming out of sidewalks and then connecting to crosswalks. So every mapper has his or her own style. So uh, we ended up doing one too many matching for nodes in this case to, to handle these intersection uh, cases. For matching edges, similarly, we are, doing a, we are using a predefined margin. And uh, based on this margin, we are searching for line strings that are close to the graph edge, basically. So overall, by doing edge matching, uh, we are trying to discard unnecessary edges uh, at the merged data structure, while node matching is providing us the connectivity. Like if there are new edges coming in, how do we connect to the, to the main like, you know, OSM network structure? So here is uh, the summary of the overall algorithm. Like after constructing the graph and then uh, finding the matches between nodes and edges, we proceeded with, with what we call conflation. So the output of this step is the merged road network structure, uh, which uh, can be used for any, any, any of the use case that we mentioned. So uh, the reference network, reference graph here is we consider it is, as OSM, and the source network is coming from open map data sources. So um, what we do is we first look at uh, each edge, and if there is a matching edge in the reference uh, graph, then that means that edge needs to be discarded, so we are conflating that edge. Uh, if not, then we are looking at the nodes. And if the nodes have some matching nodes in the, uh, in the reference network, then that means you know, that edge was missing uh, from the, from the uh, merged result. So we are adding this edge. Um, oh, before, well, we, we need to check whether that edge exists in the, uh, in the reference graph. So if it exists in the reference graph, we conflate that. If it doesn't, we add this uh, as a new edge. Um, so for all other cases, if there is no matching, basically, this is an area that's not covered with OSM. We are adding this as a new edge. And at, each, uh, at the end of this loop, we are doing connectivity fix uh, because now we have you know, new line strings, new edges coming into this merged network, merged uh, result. And we are using node matching when we are doing the connection uh, of these new line strings to the network. Uh, I'm passing the microphone to Yunzi here. She'll talk about the results. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the conflation with cell itself actually is quite promising. Uh, at this point, we apply the, this experiment of graph-based conflation on more than four cities. 
um, each result reviewed it and curated by our mapping team. We do find that uh, there's significant increase um, in terms of the pedestrian way coverage in these cities. Like for example, Austin have more than 16 times in, uh, increase and Boston have around five times increase. There's also some cities we didn't list here, uh, which is Denver and Houston. They even have more than 30 times increase in terms of the coverage of pedestrian way. So let's take a closer look at the results um, to understand this conflation process better. Um, so we start with the node matching only. Um, here's one of the examples. We extract the intersection nodes from both data sets and do the node pairing of these inter intersecting, intersecting nodes um, and apply the node matching on that uh, with, on the conflation. You can see the results looks pretty good in this urban area. But this is a node matching only. In some area, if we apply the node matching only, the, there's still some issues res, uh, remain. Like for example, look at the middle image here. You can see there's some duplicate road segments uh, as part of the road. Um, so we apply the edge matching for the completion process. And now look at the right image here. After apply the edge matchings, the completion results uh, is even better to handle the, the duplicated part. Um, working on the conflations, um, we observed that there, the, there are different variety of pedestrian data sets. So we realized that uh, some pre-processing to standardize the input data is pretty beneficial. Um, here's examples about connectivity fix. Um, some, when the data set does not have common nodes between the intersecting line string, uh, we intersect the line string and apply the intersecting nodes, uh, and then we remove the extra small edges um, as the tiny green uh, edges show on the left image. And then on the right image, this example that when the edges does not connect at corner, uh, we extend these line strings and connect them. Um, here's the example showing that before and after the connectiv connectivity fix, um, for the conflation process. So in the middle two image, you can see before we apply the connectivity fix to standardize the input data, the results still looks um, a little bit off, the connection is not that good. Um, but after apply the connectivity fix, and sometimes we also apply smoothing fix for the data set, the connectivity, the conflation results has significant improvement. Um, we didn't include it in our presentation today, here, but we also have post-processing steps, uh, which is also working on connectivity fix and smoothing fix to make the results, a uh, conflation result more accurate. So in conclusions, we observe these uh, graph-based conflation algorithms actually pretty great uh, for preserving the connectivity. And in the future, like given the, the diversity of pedestrian data sets, um, we also plan to develop more I have more development on the pre-processing step to standardize the data set. Thank you. Thank you. So 